Hey! Today we'll create a ripple effect on the ground during a rainy day using Cinema 4D, Redshift and After Effects. There's a couple of different ways to create a ripple effect procedurally directly in Cinema 4D, but they all require a bunch of polygons and I don't think it's feasible on bigger surfaces. So unless you're working on a close-up shot, I think that the best approach is to use an animated texture. In this tutorial, we'll create a grayscale bump map which will simulate complex geometry without actually using many polygons at all. We cannot do this directly in Cinema or Redshift, so I'll show you how to do it using After Effects and then importing the map into Redshift. If you want to, you can download the ready-made map from the link in the description for free. We'll do this in four steps. First, we'll create the map for a single ripple. Then, we'll scatter that ripple onto a map. We'll make that map tileable and loopable. And finally, we'll do a quick breakdown of this scene. Let's start by creating a map for a single ripple. In After Effects, create a new composition, call it Single Ripple. 200 by 200 pixels, 25 frames per second, 35 frames long. Click and hold on the rectangle and select the ellipse. Double click on it to create a circle or shape layer as big as the composition. Get rid of the fill and add a wide stroke of two pixels. Trim the layer after 25 frames. Create a keyframe for the size at the end of the layer. Be careful to use the size parameter of the ellipse and not the scale of the transform. Go to the beginning and add a keyframe of zero. The circle should now get bigger with a constant stroke. This will mean that our ripple will have the same wavelength regardless of size, which is what we want. Press T to bring up the opacity setting and add a keyframe at the beginning of 100% and another one of zero at the end. This means that our ripple will increasingly flatten out as it gets bigger. Let's make a copy of the layer and rename them main and secondary. We'll now create a bunch of copies, moving them forward in the timeline. With each copy, we'll decrease the starting opacity. I'm doing 50%, then 30, 20, 10, 7, 6, 4. All decreasing to zero in the same amount of frames. If you watch slow motion videos of real ripple effects on water, you'll see that the waves produced are not regular at all. They have different frequencies, they add up and cancel each other, creating intricate patterns. If you want to, you can add as many details as you like, creating multiple circular shapes that fade in and out with different strokes, etc. For now, we'll just mess with the opacity a little bit. Select all the keyframes and head to the graph editor. Move around these values, you can hold shift to move them only vertically. This way the ripples are not perfect. Also I'm adding two secondary waves, adjusting the opacity so that they have 0% at the beginning and by the middle they have about 25. They then disappear like the others. Move these two so that they precede the main ripple on the timeline. Finally, create an adjustment layer on top, add a fast box blur effect and give it a value of 0.3. Done! This is the bump map for a single ripple. Let's render this out as a PNG sequence without the alpha. I might go back and forth between Cinema and After Effects, exporting multiple maps, so I like to keep each PNG sequence in a separate folder. Let's render this out to see what it looks like. Back in Cinema. First, check that the project frame rate matches that of the After Effects composition. You can see this with the shortcut Command D. Create a plane, an area light, and a redshift material for the plane. Load in the first frame of the animation, then go to the Animation tab, select the mode Simple, press the text frames and check that the frame rate matches that of the project. Create a bump node and connect it to the texture map. Check that the map type is set to High Field. Connect the output to the overall bump map. Skip through the frames and check that the bump map is working properly. Keep in mind that for this ripple effect to be visible, it will need something to reflect and to kind of distort, otherwise you'll barely see it. Let's raise the height scale to make the effect more prominent. I'll set it to 10. You could experiment with different HDRIs and maybe make the material a perfect mirror by setting the Fresnel type to metalness and setting the color of the reflectivity to white. Here's a quick render of what you should get. If there's anything you want to change in the ripple, go back to After Effects until you get a result that you like. For now, I think this is good enough. Capillary waves travel at about 0.25 meters per second. In our composition, each ripple takes exactly one second to reach the edge. Therefore, it travels 25 centimeters. So the real word size of this 200 pixel composition should be 50 centimeters. And the size of the 2000 pixel new composition should be five meters. 
This can be helpful later on when we use the map in a scene in cinema. I think that the most versatile way of scattering this composition in After Effects is to use a particle system, such as the plugin Trop Code Particular, which is part of the Maxon One subscription. However, I really wanted to keep things simple without a third-party plugin. You could try and use one of the native After Effects particle system, but they really suck and never work, so we'll do this another way. It's not the most elegant, but it works. Create a new composition, call it Multiple Ripple, set it to 2000 by 2000 pixels, 10 seconds long. Put the ripple animation in it. First of all, we'll randomize the position. Open up the position by pressing P, then option click on the stopwatch to add an expression. Write this thing in it. This will put our animation in a random position within the 00, zero position of the top left corner and the 2000, 2000 position of the bottom right corner. Now, I know that later on we'll make this animation seamless and tileable, therefore I don't want any ripple to touch the edges. I'll fix the expression confining the position to a smaller area from 100 to 1900. No ripple should now touch the edges. The animation is now changing position on every frame. To get this thing to stay where it is, we'll add a posterize time to the beginning of the expression. If you make a duplicate, there will be a new random position. We can now scatter this thing around. Let's start with 250 copies, one for each frame of the 10 seconds. Just hold down Command D and make a lot of copies. Command A to select them all, then right click, Keyframe Assistant, Sequence Layer. Check Overlap, the initial composition is 35 frames long, so set the overlap to 34. Zoom in on the timeline to check that there is only one frame space between each clip, then have a look. I'm going to get rid of these last layers, as I want both the first and the last frame to be completely black. Now there is one new particle per frame, but of course you can put way more particles than this. Simply Command A to select them all, Command C and Command V. You now have these sets of particles to increase or decrease the amount of ripples. It's a bit like having a particle per frame setting which is now set to two. I'll paste this two more times, that's four new ripple per frame. Keep in mind that we will duplicate this whole composition on top of itself a couple of times, so you don't need to go crazy with the number of particles, you can always go back and add more. One final step, head to the single ripple composition, copy the blur effect and delete the adjustment layer. Then go to the multiple ripple composition, add an adjustment layer and paste the fast blur effect in it. This way After Effects will calculate the blur effect only once, instead of once for every particle. This is the end of part 2. In the next part of the video we'll look at how to make this map seamless and tileable. But first, I would suggest making a PNG export and seeing what it looks like in Redshift. Create a new composition, 2000 by 2000 pixel, make it 10 seconds long and call it Master. Drag the previous composition in it. Duplicate the composition 4 times and distribute it on the 4 angles. You can do this by setting the position to these values. Make another copy and place it in the middle. Press R to show the rotation setting and rotate it 90 degrees. Select all the layers and pre-compose them, call it Tileable Map. Now move the composition towards one of the four sides. Add the Repetile effect and expand it to the edges. As you can see our texture is tileable, there are no hard edges. Let's now make it loopable. Put the map back in the middle and set the Repetile effect to expand 2000 pixel in every direction. Make a copy of the composition, rotate it 90 degrees by pressing R to show the setting. Remember to only rotate it 90, 180 and 270 degrees, otherwise the texture will not be tileable anymore. Also move it around a little bit. Go to one third of the timeline, make sure that only one of the two compositions is selected and make a cut using Command Shift D, or go to Edit, Split Layer. Grab the second part of the composition and holding shift, snap it to the beginning of the timeline. Then move the other part to the end of the timeline. If you now hide the bottom layer, you'll see that the end of the timeline matches with the beginning. The next frame of this composition is the same as the first frame of this one, because this is where we made the cut. We have this part where the whole thing goes black and starts again, but the composition at the bottom will cover for that. Duplicate the base composition and do the same thing move it, rotate it some 90 degrees or more, this time make the cut a two-thirds of the timeline. If you did everything correctly, you can press play and watch the end of the timeline seamlessly continuing to the beginning.
If you want to add more particles, you can repeat the process a couple more times. Alternatively, go back to the multiple ripple composition and just copy and paste some more. Finally, you can export the composition as a PNG sequence and head to Cinema 4D. I'm in the same scene we created earlier. Open the material editor and swap the old map with the new one. Remember to load the animation and check the frame rate. You can apply this bump map to basically any material and with enough reflection, you should get a decently wet result. Adjust the height scale if you want more prominent results and remember to have something reflecting on the surface to emphasize the effect. By the way, you can download this animation on my Gamrod for free. Just follow the link in the description. So, here's an example scene where I use the bump map. All of these models come from the Megascan library, which is free if you have an Epic Game account. There's a dome light with a cloudy HDRI that I downloaded for free from Polyhaven, and a bit of color to give it a colder feel. There are two spotlights, a red and a yellow one, to give the impression of some cars nearby. This is the material of the sidewalk. To give it a wet feel, all you have to do is to raise the reflections and keep the roughness at zero. Here I'm doing the same with all the other materials as well. I'm going to keep the road material as it is for now. Let's add the ripple effect on the sidewalk. Open the material and load in the first frame of the animation. Then go to animation, set the mode to simple, detect frames and check the frame rate. Now create a bump map, connect the texture and check that it's set to high field. As you can see, we already have a bump map connected to the material. So add a bump blender node. Connect the base bump to the input and our ripple bump to layer one. Finally, connect the bump blender to the material. Inside of this bump blender node, we can choose how much of one bump to see over the other. If you now bring the weight of the first layer up, we would not see the base anymore. We don't really want to mix the two bump, we want to add them up. So just check additive mode. The two bumps are now adding up. You can make the ripple effect more prominent by increasing the height scale. Before doing that, keep in mind that we really see the effect where there are reflections. Here, for example, you can clearly see it because it's reflecting this hard edge. So let's give it some more stuff to reflect because right now it's only reflecting the dome light. While I was working on this, I found it useful to create a mirror plane to art direct the precise objects that are being reflected and to help me move the reflections to the right place. For the road, instead of changing the reflection of this material, I thought about making a big puddle, just to show another way you can use the map. I've created a plane just above the road and given this material. It's basically the water preset just without dispersion. I've blended the ripple map with another normal map that I found online to give the water a bit of a random noise. The link of this map is in the description. To simulate the rain, I've used an emitter let me know if you will be interested in another tutorial on how to create actual rain using the new particle system. Finally, to simulate the impact of the raindrops on the ground, I've added another matrix object that scatters some small planes on the sidewalk. They have a very simple white material without reflection and a black and white image of a splash plugged into the opacity. I'm controlling how visible the splashes are with the transmission setting. To animate the splash, I'm simply animating the seed. Voila! I hope you found this video useful. I'm currently working on another tutorial about rain, so subscribe to stay updated. I'll see you next time. Shoo.